Hello, it's Dana. I, uh, I've been playing with this idea of faux leather. So if you didn't see part one or part two, I started out with a chamois from the Dollar Tree. I painted it with a couple different paints, one being a dark brown and the other one being this Dilusions, which is called melted chocolate. It's got a little more red in it. And anyway, I did that in the part one. And in the part two, actually, I think I did it in the part two. I'll have to go back and look. I apologize. Anyway, now what I'm doing is I'm trying to find a coating to make it look like leather. So I think I got the coloring about right. And I tried all of these. I tested all of these. So here's what we have. We have a special dark wax. And that is the colored wax that you put over chalk paint. It is actually a dark wax and it's got a, uh, a pretty thick consistency and that's what this is and it has actually changed it so this resulted in the darkest coloration. Uh, this was just trying to apply a brown bag to the top with matte gel medium in the hopes that maybe I could paint that. This I actually put on with matte Mod, po Mod Podge and I got much better results and it's adhering a good bit better. I didn't know if anything would stick to this because it just absorbs everything you put on it. But both of them seem to have stuck pretty well. This, I used shoe polish to try and get some sort of waterproof finish. Hi, Maria. And so this has a little bit more orange in it, as you can see. And I kind of like the color, but this definitely reminds me of suede, but it doesn't act like suede. You know how suede will give like, well, it does kind of act like suede when you scratch it. it. It gets that lighter coloration. So then we have the clear gesso. I do not like the results of this clear gesso. This really feels just dirty and gross. It seems to have maybe even lightened up a bit. It's very, very stiff. The Liquitex matte medium, I'm really surprised that it's not stiffer, but I, again, I'm not thrilled with the results, but it does kind of behave, whoops, I poked a hole. It does kind of behave like suede. When you scratch it, it gets a light spot. Now the Mod Podge, this popped off when I was trying to push it flat, but because I just stapled them on so I didn't get them all mixed up. The Mod Podge matte actually looks to me more like leather than any of these two. I was really surprised how the Mod Podge behaved and the gloss, I think, uh, has no sheen, almost no sheen at all. So it would need two coats, but unfortunately I contaminated my Mod Podge with a tiny bit of glitter at one time. And I never bought a new jar because I don't use the gloss very much. Hi, Grandma Jo. And so ignore the little pieces of glitter if you see them in here. But I, I'm kind of I'm kind of impressed with the Mod Podge. I'm not a, I'm not the biggest Mod Podge fan in the world. So the fact that that these I think samples did better is impressing. So definitely I'm going to take out of the running the gesso. So we're not going to go back to the gesso. And I have no choice but to take the Mod Podge gloss out for now because it is contaminated with sequins. So I don't want sequins on my faux leather because I want this to be like, or glitter. I'm sorry, I keep saying sequins, but it's glitter. And it's very fine silver glitter. And I don't want that on my final product. So we're going to take it out of the running. So um, the bag sample I may return to later. I am interested to see if this takes any color over the Mod Podge. So I would be kind of interested to see. May I may play with some brown bags later. I didn't think it would stick that well. It still looks like a brown bag to me, but I have seen some videos. Hi, Marcy. I'm, I'm sorry to hear about I did Oh, well, well, my heart goes out to you, Marcy, and I know the other girls are with me on that. Such a hard time. 
Thank you for stopping by and saying hi to us. If there's anything that we can do, which is hard to say from afar, but but we can keep you in our prayers and our thoughts and our hearts and Well, um, I know people, um, I know when I watch on TV a lot and I can't see the chat, sometimes it's frustrating for me, but, um, our friend Marcy just popped by in and, um, she can't stay long. She's had some, her, her mother's not, not well. So she's just popped in to say hello. Okay, um, so I'm going to take these off just because I know which ones are which when I look at them, and I'm going to set them aside because I don't, I'm not planning on doing any brown paper on this, but I may indeed return to that idea. It's not, it's not a terrible idea, and I did watch some videos that, that they came out pretty interesting, and Sue did a masking tape faux leather. So I'm kind of interested to see. She's supposed to send me some pictures of that. So, um, so, and I'm going to take, let's see, we took the clear gesso out of the running. So let's take that away. Okay. So as for these, not sure I love the orange of the shoe polish, but I'll tell you what I do like. I do like the red undertones of it. I'm actually thinking if I had another piece, which I do have this control piece, you know what, just for, just for the heck of it, I'm going to, I'm going to cut my plain no treatment piece in half and I'm going to combine these waxes to see what color they are because this is a little dark and this is a little orange. I wonder if I put them together, if they wouldn't be good. So I'm going to get in my drawer over here. I have a desk to, to the side of me that I got out of the trash about a year ago saying I was going to refinish it. And it very quickly became the stand that my typewriter and my sewing machine share. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to try this and see what happens. I'm just going to rub a little bit of this in. So one end and then I'm going to grab some of this too. Let's see if I can grab like a chunk of it. You know, I'm thinking that the wax may work out just as good um, as a waterproofing agent. I don't know, but let me get a little bit more of that. But I'm surprised that where you put the wax thicker, it does add a little bit of a sheen. Not a leather-like sheen, but it does add a little bit of a sheen. So I'm just going to pile a whole bunch on here and see what we get. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside. This does take 24 hours to cure. This dries in a matter of minutes, so this definitely is more advantageous as far as the shoe polish drying quickly. Look, I know I have polish on my, or wax on my fingernails. Um, but I'd be interested to see, and I kind of like the color that came out. It's not really brown, it's not really red. It's kind of a little of both. So who knows? Sorry about that racket. Okay, I wanna make sure that lid's on. I don't want my wax drying out. It's no good. Okay. Okay, so I kind of have a decision to make here on what I'm going to do. So my next option here is to add wax on top of some of the mat, which, as you can tell, this is the treated side. This has been treated with the Mod Podge mat, and this 
has not. I wonder if I put something shiny on top of it, if, if it wouldn't look more like leather, because I think I, I like the, this plain feel of this. I like the fact that it feels like suede. And although I need something to waterproof it, I think on the inside, I can use one of these waxes. So I'm not as concerned with what happens here. Um, I know that this is a possibility out for the inside. I know that the odor goes away and cause I was sniffing them a little bit ago before I got this one out. Now I can smell it. But so I know for the inside I can wax and I want, I have to have some, I have no patience. I don't know if you guys realize this or not. I have no patience for stuff like this. So I have to get this down to whatever works that I can just slap it on real quick and set it aside to dry. Cause I don't like this ugly, busy work. <laughs> Grandma Joe's laughing, but it's true. I want to figure out what works cause I want a certain result. And if I can get it really close to that, I'll be thrilled. Okay. So let me show you what, uh, let me set this aside for a second. I'll come back to that. Let me remind you of what the cover looks like with nothing on it. So I've made two signatures so far. I've done nothing to these papers other than coffee and tea staining. And I have shredded the edges with the edge of my scissors and just made little tears here and there. I then took them bunched up together because I started to age them with the coffee ink. And what I found was this is going to take forever. Again, this is where I lose my patience. I don't want to sit and, and ink the edges of 15 different pieces of paper. I just want to be done with it. Right? So there's a little chunk I tore out there. So I really feel like, uh, this worked out really good for me. Let me hit that. And that was to hold them all together. I'll show you what I did. If you hold them all together, cause they're not exactly precisely even and get your, your ink blotter really, whoops, really inked up. You can just kind of go back and forth inside there. And I just went back, forth, left, right, all over. And I just, went over and over two or three times to make it look really dark the best I could. So I did all of these sides. I think I could do the bottom once, once more. I think that's the bottom. And that's just because where I roughed it up, you could kind of see the core of the paper. Now I'm really glad I didn't start with white paper. This is a really, really thick cardstock and it was already off white. So I'll show you what that looked like. So that's what color it was. So this is white. Excuse, there's a hair in there. This is, you know, how off white. So not, not cream by all means, but darker than what they call what eggshell. Okay. So if you compare it to the other signature, you can, you can clearly see here and I'll turn off this. I have this really bright, the color light is on. So you can see very clearly side by side, the difference in these signatures. So I want it when it's in here, when it's actually in this journal, I want it to look very grungy and not brand new. Cause this is all of course brand new. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what, grandma Joe, I can sit with embellishments. I can literally take some teeny, teeny, tiny beads and a needle and a thread and sew stamina onto a flower. I can spend hours making flowers, but I have no patience for just this, this plant, this, you know, the uglies. I have no patience for the uglies, but I think it'll be beautiful when I'm done. So I got to keep my eye on the ball. But as you can see, I don't know if you can see, let me look at the monitor here. See, I can't see without my glasses, but you can kind of see down in there, and I did, I just kind of, I mean, it, oh gosh, that always jars me. I'm sorry. I forgot the dryer. I always forget to turn the dryer off before I go live, but I just basically like, I just went through and just really, I just crumpled the pages here and there just to, just to give them some, you know, something to look 
like they had been you know, through a through a a long a long life here. Okay. So back to my um 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 what are we what were we doing? Oh, okay. So back to my clear coating. I have to decide what what I'm gonna shine these with. And I should have made more samples, huh? So the gloss isn't really glossy. So since there is already, okay, I'm going to say since there's already see uh, these little um, glitters in here, <laughs> I keep wanting to say sequins. Oh my goodness, Dana. I, I can't switch gears. My fan kicked on. Did you hear it? It sounds like my computer has gas. Ever since I got this new, this new webcam, it likes to over, my computer wants to overheat and then the fan will kick on for a second and it cools it down and then it kicks off. But every time it kicks it on, it goes, it's like a, it's like one of those tiny remote control airplanes are flying by. Okay. So on this half from the staple over, I'm going to go ahead and just put some, some Mod Podge to see if we can get it a little bit glossier. That might be too much. I don't want it to be super shiny. I don't want it to end up looking like plastic or look pleather. It could look like pleather or vinyl even worse. That might be worse. It could just not even look like anything. And in the end, you know what? It might look like a coated dirty chamois. Yeah, get it some gas eggs. Yes. It needs some, yeah, it needs a, yeah. Uh, I do not have glass stain. Is that, now when you say glass stain, like what you paint to make like fa faux stained glass windows, is that what you're talking about, Maria? Grandma Joe, I know, I think I know some of, something about when my computer gets a virus, what to do, but I don't know what to do when it gets gas, girl. I'm, and I'm a nurse, you know, I don't know. I've been trained in, in computer gas. The one from Jane, De I do not. I do not. Okay. So this is the, oh no, this is the matte Mod Podge. Oh no, or, or the gloss Mod Podge. So this has the glitter in it. Look, I just painted the wrong one. I'm glad I only did half of that. Okay, so this is the Mod Podge matte with the gloss over the top. And this is the Mod Podge gloss. And we're gonna put some more gloss over the top of that. Okay, Dana. See, this is why you should always have plenty of samples on hand plenty of samples. So, so this is the second coat. Of. Mod Podge gloss. And I'm using the stiff stenciling brush just because this is really easy for me to clean out. If I need to change paints, I know, I know from doing it with color. When I have to change color, I can just like squeeze it out and then rinse it out with water and get the color out real quick as opposed to a softer brush when I'm doing sample -y stuff. So, because it doesn't hold any water like a fiber bristle would because it's just these little plastic bristles. So it doesn't actually hold the paint or the water that well. So... Uh, so that I don't have to dirty eight brushes. I'm just going to use that. And then, okay, so this was the Liquitex matte medium. And it's kind of, I don't know. Let's look how waterproof these are. Let's just do a little experiment and see. Okay, the water soaked right into that one. And not so much into that one. Okay, can you see the water's beating up on that one? 
and it's still sitting on top. Can you see that? This is soaked in. It's not like I can't get it off at all. And this one, can you see that? That drop ran off and is laying on the paper. So this is, I, I guess I am going to have to go with the Liquitex after all. Or, I don't know. Let's see. The shoe polish bead. The bead is sitting on the shoe polish. Okay. And it's sitting on the, the waxed one. So, I figured it would. Wax and water don't match. So, let's get that bead off there. And that bead off there. And this made a little mark, but that's because my water's dirty. So, it's all gluey, whatever. Mod Podgy mess. Okay, so... <clears throat> I'm really shocked. I thought what Mod Podge really made it more waterproof, but that just, like, that was like, it was never even, look at that. That just, like, soaked right down in there. Oh, well, I guess we're going to take Mod Podge, Mod Podge out of the initial coating race. So, So here's what we have left. We have the matte gel is a good first coat. And then we have, we have the wax that we're going to do on the inside. And I, to tell you the truth, I already love the color of this. It looks a little, let me turn this color light off and show you. It looks a little grungy and a little like dirty red spots, dark spots. It's got that variation and see on this side, there's nothing. It's just the painted piece. So if you look at it beside an untreated piece, this has got both waxes on it. I really like that for the faux suede. So I think on the inside of the book, I am definitely going to go ahead and use both of those waxes. So for the outside of the book, I think I'm gonna do the, the Liquitex Matte Medium first because I don't really have a choice because I'm going to have to put something over the top of it to add some sheen and and I have to somehow make it a little more waterproof. If this thing soaks up just a, <clears throat> just a little bit of water, Grandma Joe's Scotch Guard is one of the most dangerous things. So I don't buy it. And if you have Netflix, Grandma Joe, I want you to watch a show called The Devil We Know. It's about 3M and DuPont and how they have polluted the world. You will never be angrier in your life. You will never again eat or buy Teflon, Scotch Guard, or anything Gore-Tex. And <clears throat> they have found it all over the world now, This the harmful chemical that's in it. They made, they tried to make, I mean, they have just controlled the lawmakers so much. I hate to sound like a conspiracy theorist, but I learned all this on that Netflix show. And it is, um, I mean, when I've looked it up, it's just, it's, it'll make you angry. It'll make you really angry. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and throw this away. And well, maybe I'll keep all three of these. Maybe I'll keep these samples. I got the dark, the shoe polish and the mixture of the two. So actually I kind of like the orangey color. Do you guys like the lighter color of this for the inside, the suede looking part? I think it should be lighter on the inside. Do you guys agree or do you not? Do you guys think that's, I'm going to keep that because I got to take some pictures for my little I got a little how-to file. So sometimes when I make stuff, I forget how I made it. Okay. So let's just revisit the journal. Let's go ahead and, and work on the inside of it. Because here's the inside. I, I still, I do feel like it's really kind of orangey. I'll turn off this light so you can see better. Do you guys think this looks a little orangey? I want it to look grungy, dirty. So I kind of feel like maybe, I don't know, the outside looks dirty enough to me. 
I wonder if we shouldn't just wax the whole thing and just chuck the idea of having a leather cover and just call it faux suede. I'm really tempted to just say that I'm going to just make it a faux suede cover with a faux leather tie. Let me fix my fan here. My fan's going crazy again. Oh, there we go. Okay. Sounds like somebody's at my house. Oh my gosh, this fan. There we go. Okay. So, I'm going to open this back up. You know what? I think we're just going to do, we're going to do a faux suede cover out of this because I don't think, I don't think I'm willing to put in the work required to make another, I, another one of these if it turns into that many coats and waiting for them to dry and then another coat and waiting for that to dry. And I just don't have it in me. I really don't. It's, it's aggravating me just to do the experiment and wait for it to dry. So I was pleasantly surprised by mod mod podge initially and it may indeed be waterproof on other things, on paper that's more porous. But, and maybe I didn't use enough in its defense. But I tell you what, I am a little, more than a little disappointed in the Mod Podge. All right, I'm going to put this in my hand first because it tends to melt. This is, it's kind of chilly out here in the garage. I have a sweatshirt on and it tends to, melt better in the warmth of my hand. So let me put some of the dark on in a couple spots. This smells so strong to you. I hate the fumes, but I love the look. I've got a little fan over there running, blowing it away from me. There, that kind of works. I know. I'm going to try and work this in. So does that look too dirty? You guys think it looks too dirty? I like it. And I know the camera is not picking it up because I'm trying to see on the monitor. But you know what? I think that it's a lot shine. It's going to be a lot more sheen when it dries and, than I thought. So we'll see what happens. All right, so I didn't hit the whole shebang, but I hit a lot of places, I think. Whew, that stinks. I'm going to put the lid on. Let me get the rest of the wax off this and just kind of spread it on here. You can see it when it's in the glove. You can actually see it. I don't know. Well, now you can't because it's almost gone, but. You can certainly feel it. On the glove. All right, 
So now let's do some shoe polish. I'm just going to use this same brush to kind of dig some of it out. Shoe polish and a chamois. Who knows what's going to happen here. Okay, so let's take a vote. There's three of us. Who thinks that this is going to go in the trash when it's all said and done? Raise your hand. <laughs> Am I going to throw it away? Will it be ruined? Am I make, am I spending all this? How many, you guys, how many times have you made stuff that you just couldn't save? Like, and that you just, you put it in the trash and you're like, I don't even care. I don't care how much money I invested in it. I don't care how much time I invested in it. I'm getting flustered and I'm throwing it away. Like how many times? I can't even tell you how many times I've done that. In fact, you know what I think I'm going to do? I was looking through my closet. I think I'm going to have an auction called Stuff I Didn't Finish. Because I have some, some partial projects here and there that I would like to get rid of. And I think I'm going to tell people, here, you pay me to ship it and, and I'll, and you can have it. And I'm going to find this box because I have a box of unfinished business. I call it unfinished business. It's not a business. It's a hobby, but. All right. So there is a pretty thick coat of shoe polish on top of the. Here, let me turn this off. Oh, my gosh, this fan. Let me fix this fan. I stick it. I'm going to stick this paper. See, I stick this paintbrush in there to silence it. So, okay. Because it's hitting the, I dropped my computer and it's hitting the cover of my computer. So as long as I prop the cover up away where the fan can freely turn and not make that horrendous sound, then I think we're, we're all a lot happier. I got to make sure and get the edges pretty good. Okay, so let's go over here and do some of this. A little bit more orange. More orange. I'm putting it in the wrinkles too. I think it accents those wrinkles pretty well. Where those, you know, anywhere where you put it, you can see the wrinkles better. I wonder why that is. I don't know, but I'm just going to keep doing it. I am going to have to find a better way to put this on. So maybe I will switch to one of those liquid shoe polishes that I can just kind of maybe brayer on or something. I don't know. Is a liquid shoe polish, it's wax, isn't it? Just a, a thinner liquid wax. I think. Okay, Ugh. this is probably, I should probably save that brush and just make it a wax brush, huh? Okay, let's do that. Think of that. 
I have to write on it or I'll forget. Because, you know, I got it like that. So, so, there's one side. I'm not unhappy with it. There's a little speck of something that flew by and some fuzz. So, I'm not unhappy with it at all. It does have a film when I touch it, which I assume will go away. Fingers crossed, right? Oh, I have to tell you guys something. I saw a really, really funny post from a girl I went to high school with. And on Facebook, I was flipping through Facebook, which I don't look at Facebook that much. But she said, um, you know how when you, when you use an emoji, when you pull your little keyboard up of symbols, it'll show you your most recently used emojis or the most, the ones you use the most, it'll put those up first in that little section. And, and uh, so that you can, you don't have to scroll through. And so I was reading her post and she said in her, in her most commonly used section of her emojis that she saw the, the middle finger emoji and that she apologizes to anyone she sent that to because without her glasses, it looks like just like the fingers crossed emoji. And she's just freaking out and said, Oh my God, I hope I didn't send that to anyone. <laughs> anyone. <laughs> I laughed and I thought, Oh wow. That sounds like something Dana would do. And, uh, I got such a kick out of that. I could not stop laughing when I read that post. And now I want to know, like, I want to know who she sent it to. So is it, I thought, oh, I bet everybody's going back, looking through their text to see if she sent them the middle finger or not. So something funny for the day. Got a little laugh out of that. I was cracking up. I thought, yep. That stuff happens. You know, my grandma used to say, there's no shame in getting older, but it sure is inconvenient. So remember, ladies, we might be a day older today, but there's no shame in our game. All right. So it looks like that's about it for me. I'm going to have to leave this dry. This takes 24 hours to cure. Um, after that, then what have we got? Well, we've got the other side, which is technically the inside, but I could bend it the opposite direction and make that the outside if I so desired. But I think that this has just enough sheen on it that I like it. And it does kind of remind me of Naga hide, dirty old piece of Naga hide. So I think that this is, is going to be our faux leather after all. I don't know. When I get done uh, letting it sit and cure, which will be, you know, noonish tomorrow because it's 1.30 here. But about, you know, after this time tomorrow, I think I can go through and buff it now. Can't really buff suede, right? Because it's not a solid surface. But I may be able to take some kind of, you know, gentle, a soft cloth to it or something and get a sheen to it. I don't know. I might put a second coat of wax on it. Either way, I know now at least it is starting to become waterproof. And that to me is the most important part. So once that done, is done curing, I'll put the matte gel, I'll put a nice thick coat of matte gel on the other side. And that then it'll be water resistant for sure. Because I really do not want uh, paper. I don't think paper and water mix as well. So I have another surprise. Let me show you what I found. Since you guys are here, I'm not showing anybody else unless they watch my video. Okay, so I found this. Unbelievable. I found this button from the 19, I don't know what. Grandma Joe, I know you know what this is. 
because we had these on to, to for our sweaters, <clears throat> our big bulky sweaters to close back in the 70s. And if if you didn't have one, I know darn well I did. So I thought, oh, that's so cool. It's this tortoise shell or whatever button. And it comes with this, this giant snap, right? Here, if I can get it apart. Well, it's not really, it's not really coming apart. But if I'm going to take that, I'm not using this, but I want to show you if I can pull it apart. Oh, well, darn it. Now I went too far. Now you went too far, Dana. That's not unlike me. Okay. If you pull it apart just so, you can use this as a tiny mo movie reel in a mixed media project. Is that cool? What, will that look like a movie reel if I put a little strip of film in it? Huh? 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 Okay. And then it came with this little string. So I got to thinking, Dana, I know you've got something. And look, that's the sweater that that button came with, right? The big chunky sweaters and it's all, it's got like the other colors weaved in and out of it. It's got some white and some brown and some gray and some blue. So I know that's an old button, but look what I found. I found this and this is, I don't know if it's a shark's tooth or a what, what tooth it is. Uh, I took the kids somewhere to a museum and apparently these, they, I don't know, maybe they reproduce these with uh, plaster or whatever, but they were always buying stuff like this when they were kids. And so I thought that would be really cool if I'm making this, you know, old grungy, ancient-ish so if I did, if I turn this journal into a Viking journal or a medieval journal, or even, I don't know, some kind of old, you know, Highlander journal, then a ham bone. It's a ham bone. I knew you would know, Grandma Joe. It's a ham bone button. Yes, it is. So look at there. I couldn't believe I, I, I couldn't believe I, I was in such luck. So now I have to decide if this is going to be a decoration or if I'm actually going to use this to close the journal up because I could basically tie this onto the end and make it to where you have to thread this through a hole or, or you know, some sort of uh, opening that I would make in the cover because it's felt, even though it's a really strong felt, I really feel like I don't want to punch any more holes than I have to in it. So in the end, whatever I wrap around the outside has to be sturdy. I mean, I want it to last the, the, the life of the journal, but it also has to be kind of uh, grungy, old, something, something really super unique that doesn't, that isn't going to be just same old hitching post I put on every other journal. So we'll see. That's what I found so far. And I'm still looking. I'm always looking for something odd and unique. Okay. So have, yep. You have a good day too. Oh, you can only vote one time. Okay. Well, that saves me the time from going to check. Thank you, Grandma Joe. All right. Well, I will see you all when I see you. Marie, you going shopping later? I'm going to send you some money, girl. You got to shop for me. I got to get some money. All right. Fingers crossed I hit the lottery. Bye. Bye.